Okay, we're smoking here. We got lots of work here. We got the sweat of thy brow, and we have work here. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. This should be number 23, 15.23, and we're, we're really getting into this. Now, we're looking at, just to give you a little, little bit of foresight here, uh, we're looking at at least 75 possible videos here, so at, at 25, 30 minutes of uh, 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 a smacker, you know, it's not crackle pop, so, you know, we're going to have a lot of videos here, but this subject merits our attention because it's the Word of God, and, and why shouldn't we spend a lot of time on the Word of God? I have, uh, um, I think I finished up a hundred and I don't know how many lessons we had. Uh, I, I'd say we had at least, I don't know, a hundred and uh, close to 150 lessons on the previous channel. And, uh, and although there weren't that many uh, individuals hitting those videos that, in the past couple of years, at least we had some people interested and uh and a thousand hits in this day and age is probably a lot of hits. Uh, people don't have time for Bible study. They'd rather do this and do that, which is, um, uh, they're free to do so. Uh, but the point here is that uh, I am just excited about just sharing and, and as many people, you know, he who has, a, has an ear, let him hear what's going on. Because this is what's going on for us. You know, this is, Bible study, scriptures, and that's what we do here. And we're here to comprehend together with the saints what is the height and the width, you know, what's going on, you know, so we can be circumspect. And that's what we're doing here. And we left off, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We're on, uh, uh, this is Playlist 15. We're talking about heaven and earth, science, fact, or fiction, or science 2022. And, of course, we're dealing with terrestrial and celestial physics here, which is very simple. Uh, th this doesn't require really any algebra per se or, or finding the area of a parabola. This is very, very simple stuff. It, it, but it's still very beautiful and it's very profound because it's in stone what we're reading here. And we build on this information and we don't contradict it. And people who love Jesus, they're not going to uh, seek to contradict the scriptures or to add or subtract, and so forth. Now, and that's what we do here. We, we want to be honest, and we want to be, uh, and we want to please the Lord all the time. Now, we may not do that, and uh, uh, Christians will periodically do things that don't please the Lord, but our goal is to push each other, exhort each other in that direction, so that we do uh, really develop a character and behaviors that are uh, pleasing to the Lord, okay? Because we choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the respect of the Lord, of His authority and His majesty. He is your excellency. That's what He is. And that's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to, to, in real time with boots on the ground, love the Lord your God. That's what we're here to do. Boots on the ground, you know. There are a lot of, there's a lot of stimulus out there, or stimuli that people are getting into. Adults are getting into republicanisms, or you know, uh, you know, meetings with the Republicans, and they're getting all excited. And and uh, we're we're not here to say that that's all bad. Um, there's a lot of good going on in some of these things. But for us who are are um, you know, adamantly participating in Bible study and church activities and evangelism, we, we don't necessarily have that much time for what's out there, you know, on, on your cable TV and on your TV and whatever, and lots of entertainment and all this, and, uh, you know, the, the world, um, because the Bible says do not love the world. I love the people in the world, and I enjoy the world, but I don't love the world. I love the idea of being with the Master. That's the idea that I love the most, and that's called the blessed hope. And that's called your crown or your number one thing that you're very happy about. That's what Paul said to the Thessalonians, and that's what we think here, that that is our number one uh, um, thought in our brains.
and nothing will, nothing will remove that attachment. That we are abiding in Him and we're focused on His purposes. And they're not that complicated and there's not that many uh, purposes that He has or goals that He has for us in, in relationship to uh, uh, duties in the church. They're very simple. They're not, uh, they're not perplexing. Uh, John says in his first letter that the Lord's commandments are not burdensome. In his letters, that's what he said. What we're doing right now is not burdensome. It's work. But we're not sweating and, 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 and straining over here. We're not... And neither will you when you kneel before the Lord because he said... My yoke is easy and my burden is light. The work that you have as a slave of Jesus Christ will always be light. Now, it may seem like it's getting heavy, but moreover, or for, for, for the most part, it's light. In general. The Master didn't say there may not be tough times when he said, put my yoke upon you. That's not what he meant when he said, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. It means in general, it's much easier than what you had before. Before you came to Jesus Christ. Most people in general are on a roller coaster before they come to Jesus Christ. And they experience a life of roller coaster ideas, uh, roller coaster emotions, and it, it is just one ride up and down that drives people crazy. Now, that's why a lot of people commit suicide and so forth, because the world has you up and down, and you're going left and you're going right, and you don't know, you don't know up from down. That's why the Bible says that humans, uh, at the Adam's family, were subject to vanity. Meaning, at the end of the day, you felt empty, no matter what you did. You, you, you didn't get the goods. You, you don't have the agape love of Jesus Christ, the high love, and, and the experience of that high love. You don't, you have, you, you, you don't know that. You, you haven't experienced it. And you don't have the truth. You have, you have some tiny truths or something, but you don't know profound truth. Like we're going over here right now. This is profound truth. It's not going anywhere. Just like the pillars... That, 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 that we just read, that the throne of God was established on pillars in water. That's quite simply understood. Then the earth was also established basically in water, and under the water is dirt. In other words, a lot of the dirt is on water, and under the water is dirt. So it's like a, an aquifer or something. But we're not going to go into the, 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 uh, the geography and geology right now, what I want to talk about was, was that we're here to just rejoice in all of this wonderful knowledge, and, and we're just, as, as, as they say, we're, we're cool with it. You know, this is, this is, this is where it's at. Now, this is Jeremiah. He is on fire, and we're going to get going as we get back into this. I wanted to get back into uh, Psalm 104, verse 9. Thou hast set a bound. There you go. There's an end to this plate. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over. So the, 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 the dirt and the water cannot go beyond the boundary that this plate has. That's it. And then we find out, and we look further, that they turn not again to cover the earth. So the, the Lord does not want it to turn and go around and, and cover the earth with, with, a, with a ball of water or a plate of water. God does not want water on the other side and dirt on the other side of the plate or the foundation. In other words, it's just one face. That's why the Bible says the face of the earth. 
When the Bible says the face, it means the face. On a ball or a square, there are multiple faces. Okay? Now we're going to move on because I'm establishing this so we can move on. We, 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 we got to get going. Okay? We, uh... Now we had 104.5. And we talked about the earth moving. And, and we're going to go back to that again. Let's go to... Let's jump ahead. And I'll say this one more time, and I'll say this repeatedly, off and on. We're not going to go through all the science in your Bible, because there's a, there's a lot of science here. I mean, a lot of people don't take the time to do this, and, uh, and I'm not trying to say that there's, there's uh, more science than, you know, the, the, the science books that we have available pertaining to looking at geological formations and so forth uh, in the United States or, or in the world pertaining to, uh, you know, uh, movements of volcanic and volcanic ash and, you know, and atmospheric conditions, which, which and, and remember, let, let me say one more thing about this the science uh, issue. The, 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 the world does not get everything wrong. A lot of things that are taught in many of these uh, engineering schools, I used, to, I used to go to college, I was in college, and we had coffee, coffee break area there at the coffee place. Uh, a lot of engineers, engineering students, they were, they were right next to us at the university. Because I was taking basically what, what they call art education, which was essentially art education slash philosophy. But uh, the, the, the students next to me uh, were engineering students. Now, obviously, a lot of the things they teach there are just reality pertaining to mathematics, uh, stress, uh, and, and atmospheric conditions, and building things, and, you know, and so on. You know. But w what we had in the art philosophy department, art education department, was definitely not science or fact. It was a lot of error and uh, people's opinions that were not uh, in line with the Word of God and not the truth. But uh, let's move on. So I wanted to look at, uh, before, because we're about ready to move on to our second portion here. Um, I want to go all the way to... Let's go to 29 for, for, for a scientific viewpoint on humans just for a moment and, and how dirt is basically the home of mankind. And this, this of course, didn't happen until the fall. Man was never supposed to go back to dirt and die. And he was supposed to live forever. And, and uh, we can look here and see in 104.29, Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. When the Bible talks about the Lord and his countenance, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. These famous scriptures that we read, they, they, they often refer to, or a lot of scriptures, to the Lord's face. And that means that the Lord's looking upon you favorably. And when the Lord's looking upon you favorably, things, the conditions are generally good. That's the point. And when, and when, and when we see a tornado or we, we're in the hospital, what we have is we have a condition where the Lord's face is turned away. That's what that, that's what that means. And, 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 and let's move on. Psalm 104, 29. Thou takest away their breath. So what happened to Adam and Eve and the entire Adam's family was, was, was that they, God breathed into them a living soul, and then they were taking in oxygen and, 
and giving out air. And, and that was life, to respire, to take in life and to exhale and to have trans, uh, transpiration and uh, oxygenation and all these kinds of processes in the body and interacting with what we call nature or trees and, and phosphates, nitrates and all that stuff uh, and uh, photosynthesis and all these components of circular life, you're out of the mix now. And you're out, you're out of the life cycle when you can't breathe anymore. That's how we know people are basically have moved on and they are now and they, they passed away, okay? And the, and the Bible says that he taketh thou takest he taketh away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. So it's their dust. That's the point. It's it's your it's your origin and your home now. That's what it means. When, when, when people go down into the earth, it's yours. It wasn't yours in the Garden of Eden, and we're not going to go into that anymore. I just want to talk about that uh, just for a moment because that's a very sad but factual situation. Let's go to 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. So God creates, the point here is God creates with his, his, uh, his ability to create. And his ability to create is, his, is, his, is a faculty, it's a function that he can perform. And he uses his love energy to create things. He molds and shapes and creates in his mind, and, and therefore it exists. He doesn't necessarily create with his hands. They came to get Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said, I am, and they all flew back. All he said was, I am. No, they're seeking Jesus Christ, and that's it. And he said, I am. And when he said, I am, they all flew back. He has the ability to use force to Judas and all of the men who came to get him, who were jealous of him, who didn't like him or hated him, they flew back. He was demonstrating what at this time? That he is Almighty God at that point. So Jesus Christ is Almighty God and he is 100% man also. Now, I wanted to go, for, let's stop here. Let, let's go to some praise right now. I mentioned to you that we're not, we're not into science uh, to be some kind of science head. We're, we're here to, 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 to look at science and to rejoice in the, the beauty of God's creation and to rejoice in the intellectual aspects of God. His ability to create beautiful things, to make them last, and to see uh, just a wonderful designer. And that's what we're doing here uh, for a lot of this lesson uh, on science here in heaven and earth. And, and that's worthy of praises because the word praise means to give thanks to God for certain things and certain certain events and certain episodes and there are millions of episodes of creation and care that God has given to us and to others whereby that we can praise the Lord eternally I praise him for waking me up in the morning you know I praise the Lord for obviously the cross I praise the Lord for having good parents. That was a big episode of my life. That's what praise means. Praise means that there's a story to tell and you're doing and you're giving that story uh, 
with an attitude of thanks and appreciation. And that's where we add worship. Because somebody who does that is worth your praise. They deserve you giving them honor. Okay? That's the point. Let's get back to the lesson, Jermaine. We're just about done with... Uh, I wanted to go to... I want to go to Revelation 4, 2. Let's see. We're done with our top scriptures here. Uh, we could go to... I think we already went to Job. We're just about done with our top section here. Yeah, we're done. We're going to go to the second section now. So we, that's a good job. We, we, we've established some upper um, creation things here. And we touched on a few lower, um, lower elements. And this is all good. This is good stuff. I mean, we're just really working hard here. This is uh, um, a labor of love, as Paul said. And we're working and we're studying and we're, 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 we're giving our energies uh, and we're submitting our energies to his energies or energia. And that he has authorized exousia. And we're showing that power, which is dunateo. And we're going to have power that, 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 that we can win with. We're going to win this war between the influences of the world and pleasing Father. Which one are we going to give in to? And, we, and we're, going, we're, we're pushing each other to giving in to the works of the Lord. To that which pleases the Lord. And we're pushing each other away from, iron sharpens iron, we're pushing each other away from that which is not beneficial for us and for others. Got it? Now we're ready for our new segment. Um, this is a wonderful time uh, in the Lord. Um, while we have this extra time, let's read Psalm 23, which I read over and over again in this ministry because it is, the, it is the cornerstone, basically, of your entire Bible. It's one of the cornerstones that the Lord is your shepherd, and you've made him your shepherd. You've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, and I shall not want. There's nothing that you need when the Lord is your shepherd. And, and, and if you find yourself having a need, and you're, and you're prostrate before the Lord, and, and you are in a state of practicing righteousness and or seeking to practice righteousness, there's a very good chance that whatever you need uh, will not, uh, it won't last too long at all. Because Psalm 23 is basically heaven. And, and a lot of this heaven can be on earth. I can experience a lot of these things, if not all of these things that uh, our wonderful brother David, the great, great grandfather, of our lovable Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we, we, we find ourselves experiencing these things. However, to say um, in 23.6 that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, we have redefined this. And we have redefined these scriptures such as that scripture, and we have a context for it which is broader now. The context is much broader. Just like when we look at the first chapter, uh, which I just gave a lesson on, I'm recapping a lesson I've already given, because I like to review what I've already been over as we build on that. That's why I have categories here. That, that's how we build things. By establishing something and then moving on. You understand that? Yeah, I, I just established a, a basic uh, a look at the heaven and the earth, and I basically went top down more or less and now we're going to get into the middle of the water and so forth and and, 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 then we'll, and we're going to finish and the same thing goes for having bible study with terms and context okay that's category 10 where i can show you and i'll give you some examples as to how we need to know 
what the, what the word means and what the context is. Such as uh, the word blessed in Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 is blessed is the man. And, and when you go to blessed in Matthew chapter 5, when Jesus is teaching on the mountain, he, he gives blessed. He, that's the first word he uses when he teaches. So the great grandfather uses that in Psalm 1 uh, as his uh, first teaching. And the great grandson uses the same word when he starts teaching. But does it mean the same word? Is the context the same? And the answer is no. Just like here we have Psalm 23, which is beautiful. It's poetic. It's some of the most beautiful things uh, that any human being has ever written uh, without question. And, and uh, uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, does that mean that every day is going to be hunky-dory and beautiful? No, that, that's not what it means. It means that in general, you're going to have a wonderful life as a Christian, but there, there are going to be quite possibly some very troubling experiences, and depending upon who you are. Uh, the Lord Jesus told uh, another saint, just like David here, uh, that uh, Paul, he told him he was going to encounter a, a whole lot of trouble. We're talking about a lot of trouble. So that when the master says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, he, what he's saying is, is, that, is that compared to being out there in the world, you're going to be in a really good position. Because when you go through your tribulations, uh, as Paul went through quite a few difficult circumstances, as you can read uh, quite readily uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, where he said, I don't want to even live anymore. Here's the leader of the church going through so much uh, hell on earth that he said that he didn't want to necessarily live anymore. We despaired of living. However, he gets the Holy Spirit and he knows where he's going. And that's what the master basically means by my yoke is easy and my burden light is. When you have intelligence and you're in jail, it's better than being in jail with no intelligence. It's a lot better. And to know where you're going is intelligence. You know where you're going. So when you go through a trial in a difficult situation, hospital, loss of job, uh, bereavement of family member or, or you know, friends turn, turn away or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You are more than a conqueror. You, you have more strength than Genghis Khan. And the reason why you have that strength and that confidence, and that boldness, is because of Father's love ghost that's present in you. It brings you joy right in the middle of this disturbing situation. Okay? We're going to come right back to the middle now. We're, we're, we're going to turn to, I'll probably turn to Habakkuk uh, 3 3 as we got some quick Bible turning to do today. So, uh, and we're, and we're going to get back into this because I have gotten away from a lot of Bible uh, page turnings and chapter readings because. We laid a foundation, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to refer to those chapters, uh, um, those lessons a lot that I've already laid down, such as uh, whose daily thanks or whose daily bread, rather. Pardon me. That's my old lesson 135. Well, I'll probably put that under daily bread uh, category. Whose daily bread? What what? What is, what's on your table? Okay, then, then we have other lessons. I'll be referring to them and uh, enjoying those references as we build up uh, our understanding of biblical ideas. That's all we're doing here. We're taking biblical ideas and concepts and we're learning and we're, and we're building on them and we're establishing them and we're broadening them and that's what learning is. Jeremiah's going to shut down. We're, I'm rejoicing together with you. Number one, in the coming of our Lord. And as David said here in Psalm 23, we're rejoicing that, uh, hey, uh, snap, crackle, pop. Surely goodness and mercy 
are going to be with me and follow me all the days of my life. Maranatha, the Lord is coming. Amen.